morning everyone, a bit of musical machinery to start the day. Welcome back. So I'm just clearing a little bit of room in the shed here this morning because we're gonna do something a little bit different today, maybe a little bit more technical. Now this really was a snap decision yesterday. Um, I just thought, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna hook in and try and get this done. Nothing like putting yourself under a little bit of pressure to get something done. So I know if I don't do it now, this thing's gonna sit around for another 12 months and I won't do it. I should really be getting this tractor connected up to the air seeder and the bar ready to start seeding in a week, but hey, we're just gonna have a red hot crack. So you see these tracks, how they are all the way in at the moment on that shaft. What we're gonna do today is try and wind them out to the end of the shaft, space them out as far as we possibly can. I hate them being in that narrow and no time like the present to have a crack at trying to get these out. So a bit of a disclaimer, I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing what I'm doing. I'm merely just reading the owner's manual and doing what it says in here. And I'm just trying to do the best job that I can with the tools that are available to me. Now, if you're looking for a professional outfit in a professional workshop to show you how to do this job, clearly this is not it. Like I said, I'm just trying to do the best job that I can with the tools that I have. Now, we do have a pretty good relationship with our local dealer and I'm lucky enough that they have lent me this tool here. This is the correct John Deere tool for winding this drive wheel out so this sits over this shaft here and it screws in to our drive wheel down here and that's you use that to help you pull that um, drive wheel out to the end of the shaft so i'm very fortunate that i've got that i think you could probably do it without it but that's going to make it a hell of a lot easier so i have had a pretty good read of the owner's manual if i mince anything here i will correct myself as i go along first things first last night i just got this thing jacked up on some jack stands i just put those where they tell you to in the book nothing fancy with that but what we got to start Start by doing here is we've got to get uh, four bolts, two here, two on the inside out of our walking beam. That's the first thing to do. We've got to come down here to our drive hub, drive wheel, and we've got to take eight bolts out of our wedge. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then on the join on the wedge, we only loosen those. Uh, we leave them in, we just loosen them. So two there, two on the other side. And then we've got to take our bolts out of our walking beam and we've got to wind them in here somewhere. Now I have to double check this step, but we'll do that as we go along. I think basically you screw those in somewhere and that helps you break the wedge off this drive wheel so that it's loose and it can be moved. So once all those, once that's loose, once those are out, this thing can essentially be moved. Now, when I spoke to the dealer, they said the easiest thing to do, or what they do is they stick a forklift down in here and they basically take the weight of this track assembly and they pull it out. They said they don't necessarily use that tool for pulling this assembly out. They said what that thing's really handy for is having screwed in there. And then when you want to tighten up your wedge, that basically holds this uh, drive wheel at the back in position while you're tightening it up because it probably is prone to moving because it is on a wedge, but we don't have a forklift, we have a loader. So we can stick that in there and we'll see whether we can take a bit of weight off that and uh, move this sucker out and get some bolts back in, get it all lined up and uh, we'll see how we go. Now worth adding about the forklift is I can't see anywhere in the instructions that it says to stick a forklift in there. It really just tells you to put the tool on here and wind it out. So we'll just have a crack and we'll see how we go. That's all we can really do. All right, we'll have a crack at these bolts with the small ugga dugger. If that doesn't work, we'll get the bigger one out. Now, one other thing it says to do is to disconnect your track tension uh, sensor there. So you just disconnect that wire and get that out of the way so you don't damage it. All right, so we've removed our two inner and outer walking beam cap screws. We've loosened the eight inner screws and left the ones by the join in the wedge. The four there, they're loose but not removed. So now we have to install the four previously removed walking beam cap screws, two in each sleeve half, 
in sleeve jacking holes E and tighten as required to loosen the wheel sleeves. So those are the holes that the screws have come out of, but the walking beam screws are gonna go into here and then they'll push on the back there and they'll pop this wedge out from the drive wheel. So we'll give that a go and see how we go. Put a bit of lube on these threads, make sure they don't bind up. And we'll screw them in so we can get this wedge to pop. Make sure these are gonna screw in relatively easily because if they're not, I might need to run a tap down them. But I did put these on the wire buff and just cleaned all the threads up as well. A bit corroded and crappy. There we go. It's pretty easy. So this is the part where it tells you to stick this tool in here and then wind out, I think it said two turns alternate, alternate from side to side and move this out this way. But this is also the part where the dealer said, stick the forklift in there and just lift it up and drag it back. So uh, I don't really know what to do. Uh, maybe we'll try and stick the tractor in there and just see what that does. And maybe that'll make it a bit easier, get a bit of weight off everything. Uh, we'll just have to see how we go. Now, unfortunately, the only configuration of the forks on the loader that would fit in that track assembly meant that all the weight was on the right-hand side of the machine, and I just stood no chance of being able to lift that track assembly with any evenness. But I think if you could, you could pull the wedge sleeves out and then you could drag that whole track assembly back in a few minutes. But I just had to go it the hard way. Well, the science has spoken and it has said that this job would be way easier with a forklift that can go into those holes down there and take the weight of that track assembly much more evenly. But a little bit of elbow grease and we've got it out. So I've wound this thing out as far as I can go. Now these half moon cutouts here is where you're supposed to take your measurement from there to the end of the axle shaft. Now I don't have anything to measure because I'm going flush with the end of the axle shaft. That's as far as it can go. So I've just got a little bit of steel here that I've um, just sliding across there and making sure it's nice and flush, which it is. And I've checked both sides and it looks absolutely beautiful. And that's where this tool now is gonna really help me out. So I just leave this on here how it is. Just a little bit of tension on these nuts here just to hold these wedges where they are. That way when I tighten, I gotta put these bolts back in next and give them a bit of a nip up. And that way when I tighten these up, these wedges can't shift at all and move the alignment of that drive wheel. So. We'll start throwing some bolts in. I think I gotta put these in, nip them, and then I gotta get uh, bolts, one bolt in the front there, and then, I don't know, there's a bit of a procedure, but we'll just follow it, tension everything up how it's supposed to, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So I've done as the book says, I've just given these bolts here a nip up and I've left this on here like the dealership said. We'll just double check. I think everything's still pretty flush. That looks about the same both sides, so I'm happy with that. Now the book says to put a screw back in the walking beam back there, a bolt, I've put one back in there. So we're gonna take this off now and we're gonna do the first tension on all these bolts here. Then we're going to put the bolts back in there and then we're going to tension it all up to spec. We're going to tension this down in a crisscross pattern, working our way around it. The tension is 245 newton, uh, 245 foot pound, 330 newton meters. So that's going to max out that little guy there, but we'll get the job done with that. 
another check there. Looking nice and flush. All right, so all of our walking beam bolts are in. They're just nipped up, they're not tensioned yet. So next step is to tension these up to 430 Newton meters or 320 foot pound. Then we're gonna come back here, uh, same tension on these. And we're gonna do the same thing, crisscross pattern, work our way around, do them all up. And then we gotta double check those as well. And then this side's done. She makes light work of 430 Newton meters. So a final check here, looks pretty good. I don't think you're gonna get it much better than that. And don't forget to plug in your track tension cylinder pressure sensor. Is that right? I think I said that right. All right, there we go. So this side here is done now. The only thing that's not done is once we get it going, we have to take it out in the paddock, do some runs up and down the paddock and check the alignment of the track. Cause as you can imagine when you moved, the back and the front end, that things can get a little bit out of whack, so we just have to do that when we when we finally get this thing going. It's already like four o'clock in the afternoon, so it's taken a lot longer than what I was thinking. Probably looks a lot quicker than that <laughs> on the camera, but yeah, look, there's been a little bit of a learning curve going on on this side. The next side should be a lot easier. I've sort of got it all sussed out now, so we're gonna start ripping into that now, but uh, yeah, she's a good thing. How nice. She's looking wide as now. day here and I got a fair way with this yesterday. I didn't start this side till like 3 30, 4 o'clock. Stacy just happened to wander down at the right time and I put her on one side of the, the tool there and we wound that track out but I finished at 6 o'clock. I got the first tension done on these bolts back here. I've got one bolt in my walking beam down here. So I just need to put my other three bolts in the walking beam, tension those and do the final tension on the drive uh, hub back here and then I'm all done really. So just about got it done in a day. I didn't think I was gonna stand a chance whatsoever, but we'll tidy it up this morning. But in all seriousness, we are back on hard ground. The jack stands are out from underneath. She is just about ready to rumble. I think what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take this thing for a bit of a spin, uh, just see what the tracks are doing, see what the alignment's like. We'll come back, we'll just recheck these. It tells you to just constantly recheck these every hour, every three hours, every day for the first week. So we'll give it a quick run. We'll retension our, our drive wheel hub there and uh, then we might take it out and start doing some adjustment to the tracks for whatever it needs. So to any of my viewers who are not farmers or anyone who's just genuinely interested why we've gone to all the effort to wind these tracks out like that, the idea is to get these out to about three meters, three meters between the tracks. So from one set of wheel marks to the other. 
The reason for that is this machine pulls the air seeder and it also pulls the chaser bin. At harvest time, now the wheels on the air seeder are at three metres, same roughly with the chaser bin. So say at seeding time we're going down the, down the paddock, we've got, when the tracks were wound in, we're leaving two sets of wheel marks basically down the, down the paddock. We're leaving two compaction lines, one for the air seeder, one for the tractor. Now the idea is they'll be following the same wheel marks so we're not compacting the ground as much. Same at uh, harvest time. It's really annoying actually having the, tr having the tracks in with the chaser bin on. With them out, it's gonna make it a lot easier to line up next to bins and stuff like that because you had such a big gap between the tractor and the edge of the chaser bin. So that's basically the idea. And also, instead of running over one lot of stubble and compacting one lot of wheel marks during um, harvest time, we're running over more stubble, we're compacting the ground more because we're leaving two sets of wheel marks. So the idea is to get everything following each other and, and minimise the compaction. And plus, it just looks better with them wound out, let's be honest. But to be truthful, there's actually not a true three metre setting between the tracks from track to track with this machine. If you go to the next set of holes in, so that one there, it's about five centimetres or two inches, you'd have about that much on the end of your shaft as well. Uh, if you go to that inner setting, that takes you to 2950 millimetres and where we are now on the outer one, it's 3050, I think. Yeah, so five centimetres either side. So it's actually just slightly over three metres, but uh, it's better than what it was before because, I mean, you look how far these things have moved out. I think they started all the way back in here. So uh, that's about as close as we're going to get to being able to follow the air seater wheel marks. So yeah, let's go for a little spin and we'll see how things are looking. <laughs> So I've gathered some tools here. We're gonna go out into the paddock and check the alignment of the tracks. I've retensioned those hub, those drive hub bolts. They're looking all good. So this is the final step. And hope, I know, hopefully I don't have to do much adjustment because my experience with adjusting these before has not been fun. So basically they tell you to go out, drive in a straight line, don't touch the steering wheel, don't touch the brakes, go about 50 metres at five to eight k's an hour and then stop and check your track, track alignment. So we'll do that and we'll see where we're sitting. I think we're gonna need a bit of adjustment. So you loosen the side that you want the track to go to. So at this stage I want the track to move that way a little bit. I'll go loose on the other side. It says one full turn. Maybe we'll do that. It says half a turn for fine tuning. So I don't know, maybe we'll do a, a half, a hole first and we'll go from there. So in my experience of doing this on our old tractor, I could be here for a while. Like I could be here for hours. So there might be a lot of this going on. I'm just gonna check back in with you guys when I've made some headway here. Well guys, I just remembered I probably should do a bit of an outro to this video. So we've had this out in the paddock, we've adjusted the tracks, uh, done the best job that I can out there doing that. Am I happy with it? About as happy as I've ever been adjusting tracks. It seems like it was the same on the old T-series that we had. You could spend hours and hours and hours out there adjusting them and you still never really get them where you want them. But uh, we've got them as good as we can get them. It's easy enough to adjust them during seeding if we need to, so we'll just keep a close eye on them. Did recheck these drive hub bolts again, because like I said, they tell you to do that a hundred times. All in all, pretty happy with how the job went. I reckon she's looking nice wound out like that, so hopefully she's a good thing. But with all that being said, I just wanted to say thank you very much to everyone for watching the video. We really do appreciate it. I do hope that there's someone out there who may get something out of this video in the future. If you're looking to do a similar job to your RT, maybe this can be a nice little video for someone to refer to. I know that I was looking for something similar to watch before I did this, but I couldn't really find anything out there. So anyway, if you would like to support the channel or you want to see more videos, just consider liking and subscribing because that really helps us out. You guys have yourselves a good one and until next time, see ya.